Hey guys, so welcome back to this chain ladder series that we're a couple of videos into now. So in the last video, we calculated our factors, which are the figures in this array here, which correspond to our data triangle up here. So if you're just coming into the series now, it might be helpful to watch the first couple of videos, but if you know what's going on just from looking at that, you may be able to just jump in here as well. And we plotted them down here. And what we're alluding to is the fact that we haven't seen any evidence to suggest that at this last column out here, we're fully developed and this is actually an ultimate loss, uh, particularly since this last factor here is not one. And you'd probably like to see a couple of ones as well, just to show that it's not just the one year where it's there's no difference. You'd probably want to see for confidence to have more confidence in it, you'd probably want to see that that figure remains stable for a number of development periods. And that's going to obviously change depending on what class of business you're looking at. So at the end of the last video, what I mentioned is we're going to look at a method and there's specifically a regression method that we can use to extrapolate out here and try to get to a point where we're actually happy with um, an, an, an additional factor that is not in this array here that we can apply to this column here. So our last column that would take us to a column which we can call our ultimate column where we're satisfied that that's our best estimate of the ultimate claims. Now, if we look at this plot down here, which we plotted up in the last video, it doesn't really look too suitable to feed a regression line to it. It doesn't look linear at all. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to explore that a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll create another plot here. And we'll just create a big size 12, 6. And we'll quickly just put some title and whatnot on it so it's it's a bit more polished so we'll just call it plot of calculated factors we might be able to just grab these from up here actually we'll grab our from the last video if you've been following along if not you might have to type them out but we'll grab those for our x and y label of our plot and now what we're going to do here instead uh, we're going to use seaborn so that's why we um, imported it up the top here so that's the seaborn import and we can go sns and they have this reg plot for I guess it stands for regression plot, I'm assuming so. And we go x equals dev period, which again, we've defined in prior video. And y equals factors plt.show. And we'll have a look at that. So that's essentially this plot that we've got here. And it looks a bit scary. It looks a bit different because this only goes down to one on the y-axis, but because this is fitting the line, it goes um, further down. But you can see the shape there, which is the same as this shape. And as I said, it's not really linear. So you can see the shading on either side of the regression line. It's quite wide and it's probably not a great fit as you can see there. So what we can do is we can do this. We can go S and S, so Seaborn again, reg plot, and we'll set our X as dev period again. And what we what our Y will be is it'll be np.log and then we go factors. So we're essentially doing a log transformation on our data here, factors minus one. And if we take a look at that, that's a much better fit. So you can see there, the data is now looking linear and 
the shading on each side of the regression line is a lot narrower than what we saw in the last plot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now fit a regression line to our log transform data. So if we come down here and we'll go tail model and just to reiterate why we're doing this is because what we can do then is we can then extrapolate out to get our factor that will join this list of factors that will allow us to complete our triangle and include not only complete the triangle here but it will allow us to include an ultimate column that we're suggesting to be our ultimate loss column so fully developed so the way we'll do our model is we'll go tail model and we'll go linear regression and again we imported this from the SK learn library in the first video so you'll need to do that and if we go dot fit and we're going to go dev period and we just need to reshape this so um, the fit function or fit method accepts it. So we go reshape, negative one, one. And then we do our log transformation on the data. Factors minus one. So if we run that, we fit our linear regression model and now we can take a look at it. So if we have a look at our uh, tail model dot intercept so this is coming straight out of the model we get this 0.8657 figure and if we go tail model dot coef and we get this negative 0.62 so if we go back up here onto the seaborne plot the intercept would be the, if you took this line through the y-axis obviously if this is new for you the intercept's going to intersect the y-axis at this 0 0.8657 and the slope of this line we can see that it's a downward sloping line the slope of the line is this negative 0.6258 which is the coef Now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it tail and we want a numpy array. We'll do a list comprehension and we'll go 10, i plus 10 for i in range. Go 101 so we've got plenty of data there and I'll show you what this is doing in a second. And then if we go tail equals numpy or np or exp so because we did the log transformation up here we're converting it back so the inverse function to log is the exponential so we go exp and then inside there we go tail model dot intercept plus tail model dot coef times the tail which is just this numpy array here and as you can see there that's just the uh, equation of a line just and then if we go plus one because when we did our log transformation we also subtracted one there and then if we take a quick look at our tail what we get here is we get these factors and then since we went out so far with our range out to 101 here we get all these ones so that's what well, that's essentially telling us that based on our model our linear regression model we're saying that it's fully developed out here because there's no change it's just one 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 and then what we want is we just want to create just one factor out of these that we can add to our list up here and just have one factor on the end and if you had for example here the last column which is 10 
and you multiplied it out, you'd multiply it by that to get to 11 and that to get to 12, that to get to 13 and so on. What we can do is we can just create our tail factor by doing this. If we go tail factor and then we just go tail, which is this array here and then just go dot prod and it's just gonna take the product everything. So it's just gonna be that times that times that times that. And then once we get to all these ones, it's just not gonna change. And then so when we go tail factor and actually take a look at it, that's what we get. So we get this 1.0098175 and that's gonna be then effectively included to this array here. So you can think of it as these are all our factors. That one's the last one we have, but then we can use this 1.00981 to multiply that by this column 10 and it'll take us to our ultimate figure. So obviously you saw before when there was um, the tail, it looked different. There was, we multiplied them all together. We've just condensed that into the one tail factor that we can multiply by the column 10 once we've completed that and what we're going to need to do to get to that point is we're going to need to uh, either complete or square this triangle so we have values here we're going to have to fill it all the way across but we're going to have values in here that we can use our tail factor that we just calculated there to get to our ultimate and the way we're going to fill it as I've said throughout this series is that each one of these other factors, whoops, each one of these other factors, um, depending on which period they correspond to, are gonna fill us all the way out to here. So we have column 10 to then use our tail factor. So that'll do us for this video. In the next video, we'll do this. We'll complete the triangle and calculate our ultimate claims. So if you thought this one was helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one.